Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Wars figure review. Got a really cool figure to share with you today from the three and three quarter inch Rogue One line. Comes to us as part of the final wave and it is none other than this guy, Admiral Radis of the Rebel Alliance. Very, very cool figure and a really cool character. Definitely one of my favourites from the film. And I'm really excited to have this figure in my collection. And I think you guys will be too. So if you want to add this guy to your own collection, be sure to hit the link in the video description where at the time of filming this review, he is unfortunately out of stock at staractionfigures.co.uk. Although with a little bit of blind optimism, maybe more stock will be on the way soon. And if you get an opportunity to buy this figure, whether it's at Star Action Figures or anywhere else, I highly recommend you do so as it's a great addition to the collection. So we're going to take a look at this guy in more detail in just a moment. But before we do that, as always, we are going to take a look at the packaging that he comes in. Once again, we do get this guy on a standard Rogue One card back, which features the Death Trooper brand image at the top and the Star Wars Rogue One logo just off to the side. Down below that, you've got an image of Admiral Radis himself wielding a Rebel Blaster, which I'm pretty sure he never uses in the film. And on the front of the bubble, you've got an image of the play feature that's included, which in this instance, once again, like with Lieutenant Cephala from my previous video, is a rocket launcher which again, I'm pretty sure you never used in the film. Um, on the back of the box, you've got a rundown of the Studio FX app from Hasbro, and just above that, a brief description of the character. So, standard run-of-the-mill Rogue One packaging, although this is probably one of the last times I'm gonna share this with you, as uh, obviously, products from The Last Jedi are imminent, and I'll be reviewing some of those in the coming weeks. So there we go, that's the packaging that this figure comes in. Now let's take a look at the figure itself. And as I said, this guy is very, very cool. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this figure is that Hasbro have retained an action feature from their Admiral Akbar figure from The Force Awakens in the sense that rather than giving this figure a ball joint at the head, they've actually given him the ability to speak, which is fantastic. As you can see, this figure features a hinge at the jaw which allows you to pose this figure in a variety of ways. Now, unfortunately, the hinge isn't as fluid as the one with Admiral Akbar. It's a little bit more awkward. Uh, the head feels a little bit loose and the joint is a little bit tight. So, I don't know, there's just something about that that doesn't quite work as well as Admiral Akbar. But uh, it's still a cool feature to see once again, nonetheless. Uh, one of the things I really like about this figure as well is the head sculpt itself. Um, not only is the sculpt really, really intricately detailed, it's almost like a scaled down version of the mask worn by Paul Casey in the film, but the paint applications are really nice as well. There's a great level of texture going on with the paint applications, and I absolutely love that gradient in the skin tone, which just looks fantastic. With regards to articulation throughout the rest of the figure, obviously you've got that hinge at the neck and then you've got the standard 5 POA throughout the rest of the figure itself. You've got swivels at the shoulders and swivels at the hips. Great level of detail going on in the uniform as well. In terms of design, it's very similar to the Mon Calamari officers we saw in Return of the Jedi and obviously Admiral Akbar, although it's a different colour. Once again, some really, really nice detail going on with this guy. So I really couldn't be happier with this figure. With regards to accessories, he does come with a Rebel Blaster, which feels absolutely huge. I'm not entirely sure why this blaster is so big, because it's the same type of blaster that was included with Bodhi Rook, and uh, it's just twice the size, and I really don't understand why. Again, it's meant to represent the same blaster, but it's so much bigger, and that just baffles me, quite honestly. Um, but with that being said, there's some great detail going on with it, and it's really nice to see with this figure. Again, Admiral Radis doesn't use any weapons in the film. He spends the majority of his time, like Admiral Akbar, uh, seated um, aboard his Rebel flagship. I forget the name off the top of my head, but um, yeah for action figure purposes, he needs a few weapons. So obviously he comes with the Rebel Blaster, and he also features a rocket launcher, which is quite a unique and bizarre design. Um, and quite honestly, he doesn't hold this rocket launcher too well. Uh, I did have a little bit of difficulty getting this figure just to hold the Rebel Blaster, as when I bought the figure, this hand was 
practically wide open and the blaster just used to fall out of it. So I did have to stick the hand in some boiling hot water and reshape it to get the figure to hold the blaster. And I've just really struggled with the rocket launcher um, as it just doesn't fit. It holds it for a brief time, but after a bit it will just fall out and I'm expecting it to do so in this video. But as you can see, you get a decent look at it. It's you know ridiculously oversized. It's probably one of the last times we're going to see one of these really gimmicky rocket launchers included with these figures. Um, characters from The Last Jedi tend to come with much more screen accurate accessories, which I'm really pleased about. Um, this is just really unnecessary, in my opinion. As you can see, it's another flick fire missile launcher, so you just give that a tap at the end and the rocket goes firing out. But with regards to the design, I'm just not a fan. And there it goes. Didn't even have to tickle it and it fell out. But uh, yeah, with that being the exception, the rest of the figure is really good. And uh, again, definitely recommend adding this one to the collection. Even though he wasn't on screen for a massive amount of time, his role in the film was crucial. And he's a very important character, so this is one that you're going to want to get. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this guy. I'll be back with some more reviews very, very soon. Got some more Black Series figures to give you a look at, hopefully some more Lego sets. And of course, in just a few weeks' time, or a few days' time now, we'll be taking a look at products from The Last Jedi. And I've got some really cool plans for Force Friday. So I'll uh, be sure to share all my plans with you on my social channels. So make sure you stay tuned for those. Until then, as always, thank you for watching. Keep collecting. And may the Force be with you.